Hi guys, thanks for coming in to today's workshop. My name is Summer. I'm Tyler. And today we're going to talk about how you can take an app idea and turn it into fully functioning wireframes. So getting started, a little bit about us. My name's Summer, I'm a senior studying PR and entrepreneurship, and I started this process, my app idea, back in October. This is a kind of like a little bit of an overview of the process we're gonna be talking about today, which is going from an idea, bringing it to IEC, getting a mentor, creating logic flows, drawing wireframes, and then of course, the magical tool, which is Wizard. So a little background on my idea. Back in my freshman year of college, I would be so surprised if I knew my biggest issue was going to be laundry, but it was. So my first time doing laundry in a dorm, I went, brought my clothes in, went to class, was thinking, oh, I'll go to class, maybe grab some lunch, come back, throw it in the dryer. I came back to the laundry room and my stuff was on top of the machine, soaking wet, my favorite leggings were gone, and I was so frustrated that I was motivated to create this app idea, which is Laundry Lock. So Laundry Lock is an app and lock system and it allows you to password protect your laundry as well as like track your cycle so you know when it's ready. So I had this idea again, I said back in freshman year, but it wasn't until back in October of this year that I brought my idea to IEC, which is Innovation and Entrepreneurship Club here at URI. It's a great club for fostering creativity and innovation. I'm sure you guys know, very welcoming group. And I told my idea to the club and I was referred to the incubator lab, got a mentor, which is Jim, who's been amazing in assisting me throughout this process. So what is wireframing? Basically a wireframe is the blueprint or outline of an app structure. And it helps you visualize the user experience as well as the user interface. And when I say user interface, that's referring to the screens that the user sees. It also helps in the development process um, to guide designers, developers from your start to finish point of your app. A little bit more about wireframing, it's the sequential steps in the process, which I'll get in my way of thinking about that. The next slide. So this is a look at my first, eh, more recent, I guess, actually, wireframe logic flow. And when I went to create this, the way I thought about it is a simple task like going to a restaurant. The first thing you do is you walk in, Step one, go to the host. Step two, tell them you want to eat. Go to your table, put in your order. Same thing with building an app. You have your launch screen, then you go to your login, then you go to your tutorial. So just thinking chronologically. And why are logic flows important? Well, for me, it definitely was important for clarity and organization. It's a great communication tool so other people can understand your idea and where you want to go with it. It's also important for problem solving. You don't want to get into sketching out your frames if you don't need that frame. And then it's also efficient for understanding the user's intuitive navigation, like what would make sense to them, you want to keep in mind. So after you have your logic flow, the next step is going to be designing the sketches. And that's basically visualizing the different steps inside of the logic flow. So as you can see here, you're kind of mapping out where things will be placed and where you'll be going, the navigation. And again, in this step, it's not so much about design, of course. It's more knowing, I want an image here. I don't know what it's going to be, but I know it's going to be there. So some key elements to consider when you're building these sketches are the interface elements, again, like things like buttons and menus, um, navigation system, 
Again, making sure it makes sense to the user and mapping out where they're going next. Content layout, which is arranging the content so it would, again, be intuitive to the user. Grid and spacing refers to the placement and spacing. You want things to look balanced and organized. Annotations, it's important to add thought bubbles, annotations, kind of explaining what you want to do with your design. Because to you, it might be a square representing something. But the person viewing it isn't going to know that. And then having a feedback section, of course, is always important because you want to talk to your target market or whoever you're aiming this app towards and understand their interpretation of your sketches. Low fidelity versus high fidelity. In the sketches stage, you're going to have very low fidelity wireframes. It's not till later when we get to mock-ups that you're going to have more visually appealing designs. As you can see by this example, which is some of my first wireframes, very bland. I couldn't even make a square or a rectangle straight, but that's not important. It's really just about getting your ideas onto paper. So now to the fun part, which is mockups, where we use Wizard, the magical tool. And mockups are taking your wireframes, adding some design. Wizard is an, it's a great platform that simplifies design and prototyping for digital products like apps and websites. And it's great for beginners like me, because I did not know anything about apps, computer science, again, PR and entrepreneurship over here. Um, yeah, so it's a really great app, and I'll explain some of the tools it has. When you first get started, you have the auto designer, and that's just understanding your project. So it asks you what kind of device you're making it for. Mobile, tablet, web, mine was an app. Then it asks you in 300 characters to describe the project. Again, for maybe, well, I know for me, and I don't know about you guys, but I was making an app that doesn't exist. It's not for travel. It's not for social media, per se. So it's more about getting, communicating that it's for laundry so that the graphics will align with that, not so much getting exactly how it's going to look. And then des design style. I said I wanted my app to look similar to DoorDash in the sense that it's animated and fun. I don't know if you guys know DoorDash. Well, yeah, probably. Who does it? But if you're ever on there, that's the style I was going for. And then copying URIs, dark blue, light blue, and white. The next tool that's really great is the screen generator. So this is for specific screens. So you will write a text description of your screen. Again, it understands that my product or my app is for laundry machines. So create an app or create a login for the laundry app. This is a simple command. It can make a login, but it's when you get to the more complicated screens that are specific to your app where you really have to start using the tools. And I'll show you those a few slides. The next tool that's really great is the wireframe scanner. So you can take the wireframes you draw and scan them in. And it will get as close as it can to what you drew. So this is my first wireframe. This is where I'm at currently. It's not going to look like that. But a more realistic example is use wizard can see this and translate, oh, I know it needs these three functions, these buttons, et cetera, and you can modify them. The image generator, again, is a text description, which generates an image. I'll show you that in the next slide. So for my app, because I was trying to customize it to URI. I wanted the RAM to hold a laundry bin. I did not use this, <laughs> but it's there if you guys would like to use it. <laughs> yeah. And, and then we have 
the text in image assistant which is you can select any text or image on your wireframe and it will next slide so for oh yeah for example taking this image of a washing machine i can press the suggest button and it will generate a bunch of different options that I can choose from. My favorite tools, other than the screen generator, are the design tools because they are, there are so many. So they have buttons, icons, images, text, and shape. And then within the shape function, there's a million different options. Here we have options for a mobile app. You can see order confirmation screen, it's already built for you. So you can modify it with colors and descriptions. Same thing with lists. So you don't have to drag and drop each arrow. It's already there. So here are some of my low fidelity wireframes, which while you're building your app, you can turn off the colors in print. So you can really just focus on the elements. And then in this next slide, we have what it looks like after a few frames. You can see. All good. I'm just gonna grab a sip of water. Building the wireframe. I, I would say about a month. Because the beginning stage, I know I said I started in October, but so much of the beginning was really just thinking out this app and all of the elements, like really writing it out. But when you get into designing, say, yeah, maybe a month. I guess. This was learning about learning tools, finding the tools that you like. So this was a, a lot of first-time work. Yeah, and even making this presentation, I learned so much more about Wizard. Yeah. So next is the last step, which is prototyping. So now we have all of our screens, and we can now create an interactive model that would simulate the user's experience. And you can do this by linking the screens together using the interactive elements, like I said, in the shape section and button section. There's all those interactive tools used to link. And this is great for user testing. So here's that same example again, but with the interlinking links as you can see we have the button the screen it's going to button screen it's going to then when you get to something like the home page obviously you can go in a million different directions from here and this is zoom out of my web for the user interface of the app the the business interface of the app is a huge wireframe net but this is kind of a simplified version. Important things to consider when you're designing your wireframes is user interaction. So mentor Jim, anything that doesn't add value is waste. And he is absolutely right. You want to make it as simple for the user as possible. Aesthetics are important, and it's important to consider your brand incorporating those design elements, and then the information architecture, making sure it flows in the way the user would use it and that the content is laid out in a way that is most intuitive. So we have my prototype here, but I actually have a little video. Yeah. So after using Wizard, this is something or a final product you all could create. Is there no speakers here? 
Or is there not a speaker plugged in? No, I think it's coming from the computer. Just go to settings and share your audio. Hmm? Just go to settings and share your output with the yeah. System settings. Go to sound. The output. Change your change your output to the display board. Oh, here we go. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Here's these issues and we can handle. Thank you. 
of the positivity, but Russia was supposed to use it to enter their original country. Okay. The user computes the start and reload or return to the home page. The machine reservation interface enables users to put machines in advance, prompting the user to enter the facility location, number of machines for which to reserve, and reservation type. Finally, the user transaction history button gives access to the users, which is for free, and to the payment service type. So that is the prototype made with wizard. And now we can jump into our next steps. Alrighty. So what basically what comes right after you have your, your app designed out and planned exactly how you want is you then look into the back end of that, which is which I'm gonna explain. So I'm a super visual learner myself, so I'm not gonna put a lot of things up here that's you know, that I'm gonna have to read off of or anything like that. I'm just going to give you a bunch of pictures because that's how I feel like it's best represented. So when talking about coding, you have a lot of different options to choose from. These are all different languages. So each of these different languages, you have Java. That's like super, that's like the most basic one. And then you, as you move down and it goes to Python and then you get into these, these are more like business oriented for the business side of things. Um, Main, the main two I'm going to talk about today are Kotlin and Swift, which are the best for app development. Um, in terms of developing apps for Androids, you would use Kotlin for like the Google Play Store because they have their Apple and Google do not play nice when it comes to giving each other code. So you have two different types of programs. We're going to go through Swift today, but let me tell you, these two are basically the same thing, just different brand. You, you know, you have iPhone, Apple, Android, same difference. So over to the right, we have we have a string of code that I uh, wrote up in about three minutes. Um, so this is, right, it looks really complex. It's not, it, this is just what the back end of a uh, username password system would be. So you go onto your app, you're like, oh, enter a new password, or it's like, oh, sign up, right? So this is what that would look like on the back end. But it's super easy because nowadays we have chat GPT. So you can just type into chat GPT and be like, I want you to create a code in Swift format. And be like, I want to create a code in Swift format. This one's in Python. It's at the top right there. Um, so you could be like, I want this in Swift format. I want you to create a username and password system. Um, and then you would type all the details you wanted it to add. And this is just a super streamlined basic. This is what the, uh, the back end of the app would look like. And we'll, we'll get into that. All right, so, so with code, obviously ChatGPT is not perfect. I wanted to make the, my side of this presentation as user-friendly as possible. Like my background's in accounting. I'm not a computer science major or anything like that. So I also not great at the coding end, but I, I'm, I know one or two languages, not any of the ones. I actually learned Swift last night just for this. So I can go through it and tell you how to use it. So ChatGPT, not perfect. So what, how you would, you know, figure out how to like, if you know, I don't know how to read code, how, what's, how am I going to know what's wrong, what's right, blah, blah, blah. So I took the liberty of finding a great program. This website's called Sneak. You can find it online, completely free. And you put your, you just copy paste the code you get from ChatGPT right here, and it just it checks it for you, and then it'll have a pop-up screen. It will say it's good or it's bad, and then it will tell you what's good or bad. It'll actually pop up another screen, and it will uh, it'll go through the intricacies. It'll be like, oh, this this is the problem with this, and then you would just go back, and the way you would fix it is you would go back. You would go back to like your AI program. It doesn't have to be ChatGPT. But you can use any of them. There's a lot of them online that are all free to use. You can just log in Google or whatever it be. But um, you would then you would then you could just take it back there, redo it, check it again. When it finally comes up as good, you could then take it and then we go transition from this. This is on this is Swift. So Swift is an Apple program. You'd use it. It's only on Apple products. Don't know why, but it is. It's super user friendly. 
it's really, really easy to use. So then you would take your completed code, your whole string here, and you would then take it and you'd paste it right into this screen. And this screen will then pop up. I'll try to show you on my phone. The phone right here, like the preview screen. So that's basically the same thing as uh, Wizard. Basically does the same thing Wizard does, but it shows you all the code on the, the back end while you're doing it. So, okay. so, so let's see. So once, basically, once you had your thing, your code here, it'll pop up on the phone and it will, it'll read exactly whatever you asked it to. If you said username, password, it'll pop up username and password. I just had some really generic ones here. All right, so the next step after testing your code for the app would be exporting it for use. So once you have your, this is all in Swift, so this is the same program. So this is like in the corner of the phone. You would just go to the screen right here. You click that little export button. You then, it's going to pop up this like export Swift code screen. And then you just go, you highlight all the files. And all the files are, this is all one screen, I'm trying to like, Screenshots were not great on the Mac. But um, basically, it, it's all one screen. So this is all to your left. And like you have the, the code in the middle, the phone to the right. So you would just highlight the file you're using. It'll be literally highlighted on top of all of these like these are. And you would just click copy items if needed, create groups, new app. And then you could take it, or you could take it to test flight. And basically, what that will do, once you create export, it'll put a, it'll create like a, an executable application that you can use. And then on Apple, this will be on your desktop or on Windows, same thing. It'll also be on your desktop. So I didn't find the Android equivalent for this one. This is just the Apple equivalent for this. But this is how you would take your app, your, your completed code with the wireframe together and you would then put them on Test Flight. So Test Flight's an app that Apple developed for creators, and you sign up for it, and you, you then market your app toward Apple, and they'll be like, oh, yes, no, we like it, we don't like it, want it on the App Store. Because you have to apply, right? Yes, yeah, so you apply for it. And then you, you, apply, you apply to be on Test Flight. Super easy process. It's like go fill out a form on the bottom of uh, the Apple website. You just look up uh, Apple app, is it Apple app development, and it will come right up on the app. But you can download this right from the App Store. Anyway, it's free. So you can download this right from the App Store, and then when you click on it, this is all on, I did this all on uh, Mac, just for the sake of it. But, um, so you, you click on the app, and it loads up a screen just like this. And it basically comes up, it's like my apps, apps and analytics, sales, Gives you all, all of the, the back end stats of the app on the App Store, as well as like users and access. So you would then take it, right? You would go to users and access, and then you would go to settings, you add a user, you create, a, you add your phone. Because you could, you won't, we're gonna do this, we're gonna say this is alpha testing. So when I mean alpha testing, I'm gonna mean like you only are gonna give this to people that are like working on the project with you. And then when it's more complete, like a more complete product, and you think it's ready to be seen by more and more people, because you know it's going to get out there eventually, right? Um, then you would move to like beta testing, and that's when you just give out like codes to people that would like apply for them or request the code, and that's how you could get the uh, you could spread the word on it there as well. You could also do like advertising for your for your up and coming app. And you could be like, oh, you want to apply for the beta? Uh, we're doing X amount of codes to try our app before it comes out. Um, so this would be for alpha phase testing, but you would basically, you'd add each user you wanted to have the app through this right here, and it's the same thing for adding the exe file. So you would take the file, and you can go on this app, and there's a, another screen, there's another screen where you can just, it'll say, it'll literally be like, upload app file or something very along those lines. Super user-friendly. There's like two screens when you pop up. Um, 
you would just click that and then you would drag the file in and that's it. That's all you have to do. And then it will automatically add it into this list. And it would be right here in be right here in this little testing box right here. So you have like testable apps. These are only for you, so like they wouldn't be on the app store. But if you go in here, you could download them, download them to your phone. And that's like before you would do licensing and all that. But um, yeah, any questions? I know that was a lot all at once. <laughs>